Uh, just before I actually begin the sermon, I wanted to draw something to your attention. The writer of the hymn we just sang is uh, Reverend Stephen Starkey. And uh, I noticed uh, on the most recent uh, journal from uh, Concordia uh, Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, uh, which I don't, I don't point out stuff from our seminary journals very often. Well, this isn't the journal, the magazine, whatever. Uh, but I noticed that they had three articles on music that I thought some of you might find interesting. Uh, the first one is an article on Luther on music in the life of the church. Uh, very good article on that. Then Songs of Israel of the church, Songs of the church. Uh, this one written by uh, Andrew Garricky, who was uh, son of the pastor in our neighboring parish back in Missouri. His dad was, uh, uh, what was his first name? I've blanked out. He's just really tall. Yeah, tall Garricky. But his son, Bob. Andrew. Bob Garricky? No, not Bob. Yeah, I'll, it'll come to me five, ten minutes from now, <laughs> probably. But uh, his son, Andrew, wrote about uh, the Songs of Israel, which is about the Psalms. And uh, we have been uh, studying Psalms in our Sunday morning Bible class, so that one uh, I think is a, is a very good thing to read. And then the third one is by Reverend Stephen Starkey, who wrote the song we just sang. And uh, he talks about a, a pair of different hymns that he wrote based on a different hymn tune and uh, how they've been, and now there, there's even a Spanish version in the new uh, Spanish hymnal that's been put out. But anyway, uh, very good. Uh, this is the one that drew my attention first, and then I started paging, and I saw one by uh, Andrew Garricky, uh, who's a pastor now. Anyway, that's available at the back uh, if you would like to read any of those articles. And I, I just thought since uh, Pastor Starkey's hymn was sung this morning, I better do it before I forget. So, all right. Uh, our text for today from the reading from Hebrews chapter 9, and... Uh, this is probably one of the shortest sermons uh, in my history. Uh, I'm sure I've had some that might be a little bit shorter than this, but uh, this is quite short. So, in Jesus' name. Uh, last week from Hebrews 7, we heard that Christ is the perfect forever high priest. Uh, a lot of Hebrews is about the connection of, of uh, the practices of uh, the the Hebrew temple and uh, the, the high priest and, its, and all of its relation to who Jesus is for us. So uh, last week we heard that he is, Christ is the perfect forever high priest. Our reading today from Hebrews 9 draws our attention to his holy precious blood. And uh, we'll get to uh, uh, that part of our, uh, our Lutheran teaching a little later on, uh, Luther's explanation of the second article where those words kind of uh, jump out if, if you've memorized it uh, over and over again. And holy precious blood rings in my ears uh, connected with that one. So Hebrews 9 verses 11 to 14, pretty short reading. Uh, Christ, verse 11, Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come. The good things that have come being Christ himself, Emmanuel, God with us, God's visible presence come into the world. And then with him come all sorts of other things, healings, miraculous signs, and especially the teaching of the word of the kingdom that was come in him, the king who had now come. And then verse 11 also uses the words through the greater and more perfect tent. So could be the heavenly temple, could be Jesus himself who is the temple incarnate, the presence of God who, come, who had come into the world. Verse 12, he entered the holy places. Uh, now we're talking about, uh, about God's heavenly throne room. Uh, Jesus entering that uh, at his ascension with his victory. Uh, but Jesus entering that uh, heavenly holy of holies, the most holy place, God's heavenly throne room. Then the writer of Hebrews goes back to uh, what it was like in the earthly temple. Earthly priests sacrificed goats and calves. 
shedding their blood for the repeated cleansing of the people. We talked a lot about that last week, how that whole practice had to be repeated over and over and over again because in and of itself it wasn't lasting. It all looked forward to the sacrifice of Jesus that would be the one sacrifice for all, for all time. Christ, the perfect forever high priest, sacrificed instead of the blood of animals, his own blood, once for all, as we noted last week. Christ, this perfect forever high priest, secured eternal redemption for his people. Eternal. Not just for today. Eternal. Verse 13, the Old Testament priest used blood and ashes from the sacrificed animals in various rituals to cleanse the people. Verse 14, how much more powerful and lasting is the blood of Christ. His holy precious blood purifies our conscience, changing our lives from flawed sinful works that only lead to death to works done in Christ's love that serve God by doing his will, by doing good for the people around us. The reading for all saints uh, the, on that little half sheet connect quite well with this theme as well, his holy precious blood. Revelation 7, the great multitude before the Lamb, clothed in white robes. Who are these, is the question. The answer, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. There's that theme of that holy precious blood of Jesus. And 1 John 3.3, 3, And everyone who hopes thus in him, in Christ, purifies himself as he, Christ, is pure. There's that purification through Jesus, that being washed, made clean, made pure. This is an amazing grace. This is a miraculous sign. Because since when in our normal experience does blood make robes white? Doesn't work that way in the world, does it? Since when does blood purify anything? Only the blood of the perfect forever high priest is able to do this. Only his holy precious blood can wash away our sins and purify our conscience. I'd like you to take your hymnal now, if, if you don't have it written in the, <laughs> the version of the sermon you have. Turn to page 300. 22, page 322, at the very bottom of the page it should be if, if they're all the same version. Uh, we are at the second article of the Apostles' Creed with Luther's explanation, what does this mean? Uh, please read that aloud along with me, would you? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood. By his holy, precious blood, this perfect, forever high priest has cleansed our member Eleanor Luopa and former pastor, former founding pastor here, Reverend Secker, and many more saints passed into glory beyond our own membership and covered them with the white robes of his holiness and brought them into the multitudes around his throne. By his holy, precious blood, this perfect forever high priest continues to cleanse you and me as well. 
enabling us to love one another and to show his love to the people in the world around us. Only his holy, precious blood is able to make us, as well as those who have gone before us, all saints now and for eternity. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in this Christ Jesus and his holy, precious blood.